I am thrilled. It has been way too long. To Ryan, I mean, I love what you've done with the place. This is... <laughs> This is like the beans don't burn in the kitchen. We, if you're out on the street, I will tell you that I just pulled in, and this is the new studio, and I haven't been here because right. the rapture kicked in, and you guys were doing like, I don't know, like sealed up. Yes. What is it? Were you Did you come in with the rapture? Were you even allowed to come in here and broadcast? We, yeah, we did. I did. Yeah, I, I did come in, and uh, you know, no one was allowed to come in. You know, and We wiped everything down, and we had to be out an hour before the next shift. But yes, we did come in. And I just want to say that that voice is our good friend and very talented singer-songwriter, Inda Eaton. And it's it's so nice to it's see. It's good you. to be here. I'm I'm looking at your brand new board, and I had this memory in some of the let, we won't call them the darker times. But we'll just say the original times. Corey Corey Holder came over to my house and said the the board is blown up. I think it was in the middle of a fund drive, yeah, yeah. and I don't mean the fund drive, the fund drive. Yes. And she said the board is blown up. Um, do you right. have a, sp a board? And so I sent over a board and for years it was like that board was in use. So I'm happy to see modern technology and I was bummed to get the board back. I, I gave it over. Right. Well, that was, you've got quite a history with this radio well, station. Uh, I mean, you're, you're an NPR, uh, listener. You like NPR. You love all the stations out here and they love you as well. I'm happy to say. Um, but the fact is, is that we've got quite a history. I mean, uh, you used to be in all the time at the, uh, our old location, which is right across the parking lot. Now we're at 51. We were at 71 Hill Street in the village of uh, Southampton. I actually had to look up where this place was. Yeah. I, I kid you not. I had to. And in fact, here's the funny thing. I'm driving over and I thought, because I have not been to the new location and I could not find it. You must be undisclosed on the map. <laughs> and you said the, the address in your broadcast. And I thought you're talking to Joe Shaw and you said the address. I'm like, praise God, because I don't know where the new mothership is. You know, it, it dawned on me as two o'clock was approaching. I was like, she might go over to the old location. But, you know, I I, I knew. I mean, I have seen the photos. I mean, this is it even smells new. Uh, <laughs> this is beautiful. And, and and what a great to me, a triumph to come. What is it? National Public. It's, what What is the day? It is Public Radio Music Day. National Public Radio. Radio, Radio Music Day. Music Day. It is the third annual. Okay. And uh, I thought of you because you have been such, uh, you've been in our corner. How, how many years did uh, you take part in the 4th of July float? Do you remember three, I mean, at four? least four, but we won yeah. some, and uh, we we won some awards, which of course is even the best. <laughs> That's right, we uh, did. The float won some awards. Because... I mean, at least participation award, and and those are those are great moments because it ties in the community. It ties in, and I I was listening to your broadcast before I drove in. It is about everything. It's about the local music. It's it's a, of course it's about the national artists who come through here. But we have such a beautiful selection of, I mean, some beautiful artists here. Oh my and, goodness! Yeah. And I feel like those days on the parade and that kind of community spirit did showcase that energy. I mean, yeah, it sure did. Wild. It was it was so much fun. Yeah, uh, Inda Eaton is with us as we celebrate what we just said is the third annual Public Radio Music Day here at WLIW FM. You can go to Inda Eaton. Dot com. You get access to her music. Uh, also find out where she'll be performing. And I see you're slated for the Talk House on the 17th of December. We did. We're going to announce that date, I guess, today here on... <laughs> No, I know it's not. It's, it's national. It's because it's not net because it's national public radio. It's national what? Na national music. It's it's public radio music day. That's it. Public radio music day. Right. That's a perfect day to announce a talk house show on the seventeenth of December. There you go. That's right. Yep, you'll be there with the band, right? I will be, and I don't know exactly what that looks like. It changes a bit. Okay. Uh, later in the broadcast, we'll play a clip where we have some guests like Rose Lawler or Rose Karen and Lee Lawler singing in. Um, when you go to the talk house, you just don't know what kind of show we're going to field, and that's the beauty of going to the talk house. You don't know. But you're going to have your, your – but the, the core of your band the will be there. band. You want to just rattle off who's in your band? Right now, uh, we've got Jeff Marshall on that evening. He lives in Sag Harbor, Jeff Marshall. Put okay. a plug. He's over at the hospital. we got to give uh, our love our, over to the people at the hospital. Oh, no. Oh, no, you no you, uh, working there. He, oh. He's IT. He's keeping the thing running. So Good. Jeff Marshall. Good. A Navy man, so you know you're in good hands at the hospital. Okay. Um. We'll have Ed Bamonte. He's going to be sitting in on drums. He's oh, up for from Mike? the North Fork. For Mike? He'd be sitting in yep, for Mike? Yep. 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 Mike's a great guy. No, Mike's a love, right? Oh, I love Mike. Mike's I love Mike and Tina, his wife. Oh, salt of the earth. Oh, salt real of the deal. Earth. And real their last deal. name, it, it is, I'm, I'm, I'm going to blank. I always say it wrong. It's, um, 
Googly? No, no it's Gu- I think he says Guglielmo, but okay. I always say Guglielmo because okay. I'm from the West. We don't know anything. <laughs> We don't, I, don't know anything. No, I thought all of Queens was Hooters. So, I mean, we just don't know things like that. So, <laughs> but he's, yeah, they were, I, I ran into them um, at the Sag Harbor Music Festival. Oh, just beautiful. Oh, they're great folks. Yeah. Good folks. Um, and then B will be coming in from Arizona, God willing. Okay. And maybe Mama Lee and Mama Lee Rosen. I'm hoping mm-hmm. I got to broker that deal, you know, with Jim Lawler. I got to call and make sure it's okay. And now that Mary's Marvelous is, doesn't have muffins, it's hard to, it's hard oh. to broker deals now that there's no more muffins. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, before you and uh, Indy Eaton is going to perform a couple of songs uh, with us. She's going to stay for a little while. Um, are you? You were born in California, is that right? Oh, you read the whole program. I did. <laughs> I did my. I did my job. I didn't realize. I know that you live. You know, and we'll we'll get to Arizona and Casper, Wyoming, of course. But you were you're originally from California. Well, in in a nutshell, yes. In a nutshell, I was one of those kids kind of a child not kind of a child of divorce Mm -hmm. and so i spent a lot of time on the airplane going to the different locate like a little triangle kind of the bermuda the western bermuda divorce triangle between well delaney it's i'm sure that's in the bible you look that up i don't know where that is in the bible but i'm I'm sure that is somewhere we'll we'll fact check later um between san diego where i was born chula vista uh phoenix and then our whole family's from wyoming so i would just right Circle around gotcha. the airplane. Now, when did you? When was the first time you came out here? I probably came out in 1996. That's when I played. Peter booked me sight unseen at the Talk House. Uh, Reggie Scanlon of the Radiators and Johnny Vodakovich played on my second, my sophomore album. Oh, that's what it was. Nice. For all good that, I guess that's a term, the sophomore. It was my yeah, second record. Yes. Um, and they all played. The Radiators and the Subdudes were huge at the sure. Talk House. That was part of their trap line. So it's 96 was the first 96, time. 96. And they said, oh, if you're going to play in New York City, you should play at the Talk House. And at the time, I had one of those Borders book tours. Remember hmm. back in the day, Borders, sure. that little cafe? Yep. And Borders bought a bunch of the records. So I was going to little Borders and doing the chick singer in the cafe thing. And so yeah. Peter booked me. And I do remember... Him leaving a message. There was no cell phone so much. It was like a message, don't come. We didn't sell enough tickets or something like that. And I remember leaving him a message saying, we're coming anyway. <laughs> Good for you. you know, well, it wasn't mean. It was just like, we're desperate. No, I, yeah. I probably ended up saying, we'll, we'll do it for free, but we can't, you know, we have to have that date. Right. Gotcha. And the rest is history. Yeah. And then, so, uh, and without, you know, I don't want to give too much of your privacy away, so forgive me, but uh, so is- Oh, we have no privacy good. music. I, East, is East Hampton your home base now? It is. And- uh, but I have to say, what brought me was the talk house. My wife lives here, Anne Marie McCoy, right? And so it, it's uh, you know, the home is where the heart is. Sure. And I, I think I came to to do a project here and there, and then thought, well, I'm never. Well, I can't. You know what? I came back. out here a year after year. For I came out here in '97. Really? Yeah. And I was up up in Springs at the time. Uh, that's where well, I first lived. Yep. I wouldn't have seen you that because I did not really put roots down here in 96 that's the first time i went but i i really got out here in about 2003 and by out here standards that's like five minutes i think it takes 10 years at least to figure out what's going on yeah and takes another 10 years to put your foot down Uh, yeah solid yeah i think and then you can say i have an idea of what's going on out here yeah but we don't you know uh we don't want to get too much in the weeds but boy have since the pandemic things have really changed with folks in real estate and boy what it's it seems like to me what everything that when i came out here in 97 till about maybe 2017 there was a lot there's a lot of change and a lot of you know cost of living going up but in the last few years it's changed just as much if not more in like three years as it took 20 years. Well, it is crazy. And so yeah. I know we. I'm going to make this not political because you're right. We don't do politics. What was the other one? Uh, religion. And there was something else at Thanksgiving. You can't do it. <laughs> sex. Well, yeah, but right? I don't know why you would not talk. But anyway, <laughs> it, those that sex was the third. Right. Yes. So I won't make this political. I'll make it community. Yep. We were out uh, doing these conversations, human on the street interviews about the housing crisis. We went to one of those uh symposiums at LTV to learn about the Community Housing Fund. Good. And uh, Anne-Marie, with her video and media productions, was tasked with some conversations. Mm-hmm. And 
to your point, I, you can't uh, you can't use politics. So I'd say this is a community interview. Yes, it is. And what we were finding, not that I needed conversations, was that point: the housing crisis is out of control. People can't afford to live here. They cannot. So this. No way. So no, how no. about this? I won't make this political. If you live out here, you do have the community housing fund. Right. It's on the back of the ballot. Proposition three. You might want to take a look at that. There you go. There you go. That's right. There you well go. Well put. And and I want to also say I dealt with on these conversations, which we're going to start putting out on social media. We dealt with all kinds. It didn't matter what letter was behind your name or how you identified. People wanted to talk about how. They want to live here and they want to raise their families here and they want to be here and they don't want to have this insecurity, this housing insecurity constantly over their shoulders. Oh, it's brutal. So I will say that. It is brutal. Yeah. And and folks need help out here. There's a lot of jobs out here, but folks can't afford to live out here. So it's a it's it's quite a conundrum, is right. This is the third annual public radio music day, and we are celebrating here at eighty eight point three for Eastern Long Island and Southern Connecticut and ninety six point nine. For Central and Western Suffolk County, WLIWFM, with Inda Eaton here in Studio 51. It has been way too long. Linda has, Inda has a great history with this radio station. She has been a real champion for us. She has given her blood, sweat, and tears for many years. Aww. And then we hit lockdown. And then everybody had to scatter. But uh, now we're back, and we're so glad to have you as part of this. And you've got a beautiful Martin guitar with you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for taking the trip Aww. over. It's so good to see you. So you're going to do a couple. I, what, yeah, I'm going to play. I'm, I'm thinking uh, you've inspired me about home, housing, life. Um, and I want to say, if you're driving around, you should see what the studio does look like. It really is. It's a nice vibe, I have to say. Good. Beautiful. Like, like what you do with the paint. Well, I <laughs> wish I could take credit for it, but I can't. They did a nice job, though, is right. We're very fortunate. Yeah. And we're being joined here by Delaney Hafner, who is uh, producing this session. Delaney is uh, uh, the front person for the band The Bell Curves. Who I has know, done... we're Facebook friends, and I got to I gotta, I gotta check the music out. Are you uh, playing a bunch? She's good. A little bit, come see, come saw. Well, Delaney, I, I, we're, I know we're Facebook friends, and so now that we've really met personally, and That's we're, right. it's, it's on. There you go. Good. It's Good. On. I'm glad to hear that. Once we've come to the mothership. So what are you going to do for us? What's number one? I'll tell you what. In honor of uh, public, I get the whole thing, public, public radio, radio music, music day. Public radio music day. Yep. All right. I'm going to play a song called Casper to get warmed up. Gotcha. And I think it ties into the concept. Well, what the hell does it tie in? We've been talking a lot of concepts, Brian, Delaney. I made some comment earlier like I yo-yoed around in the Bermuda Triangle of divorce. So this this is about Casper where I was I spent most of that time. A hometown concept song. It into Eaton. Driving into Casper off the exit out of drive. Looking for a lover. In the middle of the night I have seen you in the headlamps Lights off 25 I have seen you in the faces and the smiles And I thought that I would find you Through the miles In the arms of my hometown Too tired to call you I've shone out from the road Cause I've lost my pride And I've lost my drive And now it's time to crawl To the arms of my hometown For a while Down by the river At the old Ramada Hidden my grandma Worked two shifts She's waitressing to raise both those kids and my other granddaddy worked the oil fields had a business out of town where he was renting cars and both worked hard to find redemption in the passage out of town I'm too tired to call you I shot out from the road Cause I've lost my pride and I've lost my drive And now it's time to crawl To the arms of my hometown for a while Yeah, say
night Thought I saw you standing there The exit out of drive I have seen you in the smiles And the kindness And the faces off this stage Yeah And you're working hard To find redemption In the passage out of town I'm too tired to call you I'm strung out from the road Cause I've lost my pride And I've lost my drive And now it's time to crawl To the arms of my hometown For a while For a while Send them bam 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 For a while Into Eaton at, at WLIW-FM's Studio 51. And Casper, that was tremendous. Oh, thank you. Sounded gr- excellent. Now, that uh, the studio version, you can find that on uh, Inda's Go West album, which you can find at IndaEaton.com. And I think this is the, the first album, Inda, that I heard of yours. And I was like, holy smoke, she's, she lives right around here. It was so good. Oh, it, thank you. It is such a great, great record. I mean, I love all your stuff. Um, followed by Shelter in Place, which is your most recent studio album. And um, you, it's not that like you're Nostradamus or anything, but that is quite a coincidence. Shelter in Place, the name of your most recent, came out in 2018. And then don't you know, everybody was on everybody's lips because that's exactly what we were doing for two years, right? Well, right, and I... <clears throat> Had I not been in such apoplectic shock, I probably could have, um, you know, exploited that more. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, I, I did. I had people go, "Well, this must be a great time for your your album," and I'm thinking, "Well, we we have so much going on." <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that it was hard to exploit that that good uh, connection, and then I I was really I got to be honest, I had to start changing it to not say shelter in place into but shelter in place album and all this stuff because. It became such a, a a hashtag for just the most dire of all situations. So, oh my God! Right, it was everybody was saying that phrase, so it was like you couldn't distinguish that it was your also album. Also, just such a you know you. I think we all have thought about that every year. What twenty twenty part one, twenty twenty part two, twenty twenty part three, <laughs> how we would do it again if we were locked down. We all have it was like, oh, why why don't I speak Mandarin and all that, and and why didn't I exploit the name of my album Shelter in Place? Why wasn't you know what? But let's just and we all do. Oh, and the next time, oh my God, I'm gonna start doing armbands so I get my you know I don't know. What was that babble that uh, language thing yes. that you could do? So, well, man, do they have a Mandarin on babble? Well, I'm sure, like on. What is it? The Duolingo. We all have these yeah. like regrets. Like, why did I watch so much Netflix? Oh my yeah, god! Right. And um, that is one of a mine. Is like, well, why wasn't I sitting there in this hyper PR time? But the truth, let's all remind ourselves why we don't speak a second language. Is total shock. You're right. And it just kept going and going and going. So it's very hard to to say, oh, we could have done this. You can't. Yeah, you know, you're right. I was. <laughs> I'm. I'm one of those people who were like, my life is not changing much because I very. I have a very tight little world that I evolve in. So, and I didn't mind it so much, but after a while, even me being the introvert that I am, that I can be at home and I live alone and yada, yada, it, it got, it got old quick. It got old quick. And I know that, um, it was, it was kind of bleak there for a while. And I, and I, and I was thinking about folks like yourself and Nancy Atlas and Gene Casey and Caroline and all the, you know, the Mama Lee and everybody thinking, boy, it didn't seem like it was going to end. We hit that one after about six months or nine months, it was like, are we ever going to get out again? You know? And, and that's a great question. And we are, but it's also a new world. And, yeah. and something we talked about when I walked in, which is, I think the arts, uh, performing arts, music, theater, I think those are some of the last uh, places, marketplaces, places we go that have come back to what we'd call normal. And, and meaning, I think in the summer there's an energy to go outside and be part of that. I think on a national safe level to the highest level of protection, there's a good feeling about this, Mm -hmm. but every time there's some season of flu, sometimes season of COVID people make decisions. Like I'm not going out to that live music. They're not going to do it. Right. 
Exactly. So that yeah. is a reality, and it's been hard to plan. Yeah, I bet it has. It's hard to plan. And as they say, it's kind of baked in now. Everybody is kind of like, well, what is what's happening right at this moment? Should I go? Should I stay? It is baked in. That's why we did. You know, you asked, we were out in Wyoming. That's why we went then, because I figured, well, they're not going to cancel that. I mean, I've had so many things canceled. You have to keep trying. You know, Nancy, you brought up Nancy. Nancy's got a great one. Well, I'm just going to plan this and book it because if it gets canceled, right. fine. But at least we have something planned. So that's There you go. That's, that's a good way, way to look at it. Yep. Um, I do think this is probably the time now to record again. And and I I want I've got this vision about getting in their studio in December, January. Great. So February. You've, you've got some new stuff. I do. And well, it good. just makes sense. I don't know how we're gonna get it out to the people, but uh in terms of what a touring schedule looks like, but we'll worry about that when the time comes. I want you to just to remind you if you're just joining us, uh, or if you've been with us, we're uh we've got Inda Eaton in the studio. She's a uh, tremendous, we think, singer songwriter based here on Long Island on the East End, someone I play uh, quite a bit on the afternoon ramble. And you can go to IndaEaton.com to get access to her music, uh find out where uh, she's performing. And uh, it is such a pleasure to see you. It's been too long. Uh, this is the first time we've been able to get together since uh, the lockdown. Uh, Inda's most recent album is called uh, Shelter in Place, ironically, uh, which came out prior to uh, the phrase being uh, so well known now. But it's a tremendous, tremendous record. If I was to give you any suggestions, I would work backwards on Inda Eaton's catalog. I would, st- I would start with oh. Shelter in Place, go to Go West, and just work your way back because they're all worth having. But oh. start from the, the latest. And let me ask you this before you play a second song for us, if you don't mind. Um, are you, is the writing process for you, is it, is it pretty much the same? Does something, a phrase or a, or, a, or a lick come into your head and you're like, I got to get this down? Or do you sit down and say, okay, let me write a song? Or can you do both? Or I think you can do both. I think... Um, you can do both. I, I, I have done both. And, and sometimes it's a beat. Here's how I describe it. Sometimes in shows I describe this. It's like you find this hubcap that you love and you build a Cadillac around it. So there's always something. So maybe it could be a beat. Maybe it could be a lyric. Maybe it's a melody. Maybe it's something, uh, a lick on the guitar, and then you just fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes three minutes and 20 seconds to write a song because it just it's all framed out in your mind. And sometimes... I have to keep pulling that notebook out and go, where is that Lego piece going to fit in to tie this whole song together? Yeah. Yep. And I think it's a concept. You're constantly dancing between ideas and um, words. Words are words are part of it, but it's ideas and heart. And whatever is going to whatever is going to get that which is in your heart, not in your mind of your words, whatever is going to get to your heart quick. That's right. the thing. Yeah. And that was always happening, but it takes you X amount of years, I think, to tune into that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's from the heart, not not the lyrics or the mechanics of writing a song. Right. And, and there's always room for her. I'm sure I, I didn't answer that question at all. No, you really. did. Was, I, I think I kind of followed you on it. So. I, b- bottom line is I do a lot. Uh, I go all ways with that. And I think another thing that's huge about it is where are you? Where's your geography? Where's your weather? You know, there's there's some there's some things I want to do coming up. Uh, that's a long-winded concept, but I have this this tacos and Jesus project. I was well, I was in um, oh. Southern California last year for for a couple of months, and you'd go to these parks and you'd see all these families, all ages, it didn't matter, all all costumes in these public places right. having fellowship, probably like we used to do in parks, but we don't. Now we're in backyards. It's like my backyard, my space, my, 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 my. <laughs> and I thought the only way you can write or see a song like this is to be in Southern California at a park. I'm not going to write tacos and Jesus uh, on our beach. It might be something different. And right. just how geography, just like I wrote Casper that I just played in Wyoming. It's where you are sure. so often has the geographic references and also the energy that's right yeah yep into eaton uh you've got a second song for yeah. us and it won't be tacos and jesus <laughs> well wait we'll wait on that <laughs> i'm gonna stick you to well, that, that was one a long, God damn, Next that, it's just too bad this is live we could we could take that back and edit <laughs> that up but you know what's what's what do you, you want to do next? You know, I'll play you something new. I probably shouldn't because it's new and that just locks us into that. But this is a song that I for sure want to record as soon as possible. And this may be the hubcap that I was talking about that gets the whole album done. Okay. And that's some. Can I ask you? Yep. What do you think? Do you think people really care that you make an album anymore? Or is it all singles based for you? 
Well, I, you know, maybe because I'm a little bit older, but I'm an album guy. Well, I am still. Because you an... want the whole story, or why? Well, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's nice to, you know, if someone has, uh, you know, if there's a song that, you know, is just they just need to write, like you were kind of alluding to just a minute ago, and Delaney was mentioning that a little while ago that she's got a song that she just needs to to write it and record it and get it out because she just likes it so much and just wants to hear the finished product. But I, I, in general. I like a, a whole you album. Like the album. I like a whole album. Yeah, I like because usually, you know, if I like the one, I want to hear more. Yeah. There's never. But it's I'm, a story. Exactly. Yeah. What Delaney? What do you think? Album single. <laughs> Good. I haven't been on air in a long time. Well, um, we'll get back. I have on a it, lot girl, of yep. thoughts on this. I'm yeah. not sure if now's a good time what, to go. The album or it. single? I tend to listen to singles, but I like albums conceptually, and I think serious music fans will always want to listen to albums, even if average music fans only listen to singles. Well said. Well said. And I'm having that conversation in my head right now because of just what you said. And I think the single is what gets the energy going. But I do think that the people that have the people that stick with you and the people that really give a damn, they do want that just like I do, because it is that's where the heart is. That's where the grist is. That's where all the stuff is being worked out. That's where the, that's what fuels the shows. That's what fuels the discussions. And it is this conversation is an album. And even though it's not convenient for us to put down a whole album or whatever uh, in our daily lives, we're a single. We eat them up like popcorn. Right. I just think that that's where the discussion truly happens is in that relationship between the artist and the listener and the album yeah but you know i would also say that uh if there is something new that you need to get out from you know i would love to hear any new music from you so if you know i wouldn't want to have you not re release something only because it wouldn't be as part of an entire album if you know what i mean well, so if the rap if, well, that's a good point. You know, yeah. if the rapture has taught us anything, it's like whatever you're going to do, like do it because right. everything that was so precious to you before is that's got got to go out the window. And because it's like going to the Star Trek convention, you go to the Star Trek <laughs> the convention because you really care. And I do care about the album, but at the end of the day, people are like, you know, WTF? Do your work, exactly. keep going, and don't overthink it. The moment. The moment. Let's take yeah. Let's there you go. Se seize the moment. There yeah. You go. So into Eaton, into Eaton is with us. This is uh, Public Radio Music Day, the third annual, and we're just delighted to have Inda in the studio performing live. And is there a title for this new well, song? We'll call this song "Time," and this is going to on Public Radio, radio music, music Day. Day. I'm getting all tongue twisted with the National Public Radio and Public Radio National Music Day. Uh, it's fine. And Don't this worry is about a, it. well, it's okay. Yeah. Th th thank you for you know putting up with me. Uh, <laughs> this is a song called "Time," and this is one I absolutely want to record as soon as possible. And because of Delaney's inspiration and your inspiration, I'll have to make a whole record around it. I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, you better. And to Eaton. And this doesn't have to be written. This is not a San Diego talk as in Jesus vibe. This could be done in New York. This could be done anywhere. So it's not total geographic specific. Loved you from the moment that we met I like to think it softens my regret Oh, they didn't like me like my kind The devil you know is the one you like to ride The one you like to ride I never meant to cross another soul Sometimes out in this world with no control Oh, there were no cans behind the car As we tore off to the desert from my yard The desert from my yard Cause time ain't on our side Cause time ain't on our side Cause time ain't on our side To get this right Get this. And the years have come and left us on our own. And those who stood against, they now are gone. Oh, you can't know now what you didn't know then. You can't go back to where you've never been. Back to where you've never been. Cause time ain't on our 
my regret and I never meant to cross another soul just sometimes out in this world there is no control cause time ain't on our side cause time ain't on our side cause time ain't on our side no time goes fast, slow. You watch out, watch on, you watch TV, you watch it go down. It goes fast, slow. Sit down, sit tall, you sit on your hand, you watch time flow. Cause time goes fast and time goes slow, no time for regrets. Watch out, watch on, you watch TV, you watch it go down Cause time goes fast and time goes slow, no time for regrets, yeah ah. Into Eaton That's a lot of concepts That's great that was that is a great song. <laughs> Thank you. Into Eaton at WLIWFM's Studio 51 as we celebrate the third annual Public Radio Music Day, a brand new song from her. Thank you so much for debuting it. I love it. Well, thank you. And I, it, when, when it really gets good, and this is how I got to record it. Nah, so I got, got good. The, you got the sit down. Well, you got Lee and Rose going, oh. sit down. Tall, you sit on your hand, and she's going, you watch time flow. I mean, it's 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 this moment. I mean, the whole song is based, it's like you work backwards, you get that. It's like the rest is just an excuse to get to that point. Well, it's, I can't wait to record it. I, oh. don't, I don't blame you. I was so happy to be part of hearing it right now. Excellent. New from Into Eaton, the song Time. And the, just tremendous. If you want to find out more about Eaton, uh, in <laughs> That's okay. I can't even say Public Radio <laughs> National Awareness Day, so that's all right. I never realized how saying your name uh, so many times is 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 not easy because it's like Linda and Inda and Eaton, Inda Eaton, I N D A, E A T O N. It's simple. Well, it's Inda all vowels. Eaton. That's the crazy thing. <laughs> Inda was my great grandmother, and my middle name's also a vowel. Artith, so I'm Inda Artith Eaton. It's all vowels. It's, it oh, is cray cray. Yeah, the no. art of eating. I'm telling you. John Carlanco. Well, there you go. I love John. Oh, He's a great guy. Oh, he's, he's doing the Lord's work out there, <laughs> keeping all of us fed. Oh, I that's mean, right. Yeah, the food pantries. Everything. IndaEaton.com. You can get access to her music. You can find out where she's performing. She's uh, scheduled to be back at the Talk House, the Stephen Talk House on Main Street in Amagansett on the 17th of December. She just was kind enough to play a brand new song entitled Time, which uh, I think is just tremendous. I love it. And I'm not kidding. Oh, one, thank you. One listen. You're being, you're, I mean, I, you're saying kind. I'm just vulnerable. I don't think we haven't played it a lot. And you know, that's okay, too. You, it may, Delaney knows this. Like, you, when you get a song new, you got to, like, get in that vulnerable. It's like it's just getting its legs. You gotta show to yourself. Find out where, well, to find out where the song lives. Right, yeah. Uh, you yeah. don't know. And, and, you know, that's a solo version. Then there's a duo version. Sometimes I tour like that. And then you throw it to the full full hoo-ha. And then, <laughs> then it takes on its own life of its own. But if right. you can't go play it on Public Radio National Awareness Day, I mean, it's <laughs> not going to fly. Exactly right. Exactly <laughs> right. That's why they created this day, for songs like Time. Exactly. Amen. Now yeah. you know it. I do know it, and I'm looking forward to hearing it recorded. And as a matter of fact, as long as you, uh, and, and this is something we'll deal with later, as long as you're okay with signing a release because, for your appearance here today, yes. maybe we can play that acoustic version. Uh, if it if didn't you, suck. If you, we'll, yes. We'll, 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 we'll let, have to take a listen and Yes, go, exactly. Okay. We'll run it by you, and I'm getting in the weeds here with technical stuff that no, really doesn't No, but you know to... what? As long as it didn't suck. And, and... It did not suck. Okay. I can tell you that for sure. And you know what? We'll make I a think... date. We'll debut when it's recorded. We'll come here. We'll do the recorded version. I'm going to even put Delaney on the spot and say, that did not suck, did it? No. Far from it. 
Oh, no. bless your heart. From the opposite, yeah. So Inda Eaton is here with us, and uh, we're winding down. It's so nice to see you. It's oh, been way too you made long. made my day. Oh, and you made our day. from you, because it has been for a while. You know, we, we had the other place, now we have the new place, but none of us could see the new place. Right. And now we're here, and it was kind of like a shock, like, oh, we're allowed to go in public and go to the to the new station, so. Yeah, that's right. And you were, when I when I texted you, uh, I think you were in in Wyoming. I was in Wyoming. Yeah. And uh, cuz I wanted to give you as much time as I knew that we were going to do this, you know, I get, you know, other people say, "Okay, we're going to schedule this." So, and you got back to me I think that same day via text. I was hoping that the text made it out to Wyoming cuz I think they I knew you. They have that. They have the text out there <laughs> and it's it no they do and it came to me and I was thrilled and a lot of the a lot of you know you're talking about songwriting inspiration and what how, how has it sure. happened? I think I didn't realize it until the last years where I started analyzing, but a lot of my songwriting and a lot of the show that I give, so much of that comes from that East meets West relationship. I bet it does. Coming from the West and living out here and then being from there and being over there, there's always a tension and always an examination. And that well, ties in, again, we're not going to use the word politics, but it, it ties into community and it ties, when you're from somewhere and visiting or the opposite, you really notice things. Yeah. And when you're just of it all the time, you don't. Well, I would say that, and I, uh, your your video free says that perfectly. Oh, thank you. I, I love the video free, love the song. And, you know, you talk about Shelter in Place. I love that record. Somehow uh, we will, I, I, I've, I've got some thoughts how to get a life for free past what it was. We were really just launching it when the whole pandemic came in Yep. and there's the juxtaposition where we're working with the song called free and nobody was. There you go. That's and, good. That's an excellent point. Well, so it was tough, uh, to figure out how to, you know, yeah. and mark, that, get that out. And as you know, the video shows of the contrast between urban New York city and the East out, West of and it. you being in you know, the heartland. The east meets west of it. Yeah, and and then the, the, and that's another thing too. If we had a whole hour, when I come back and we debut time, often you make a piece, you 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 work on a song, you work on a show, and you think you know what it was about, but then you take a look and you say, oh, it was really about this. Right. And then the time goes by and you say, oh, it was really about this. And it's that we put that record out, Shelter in Place, in 2018, and I yeah. I feel like I'm living new versions of those lyrics all the time, just I bet. coming into them. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, that's, there's a lot to be said about, you know, music, it affects you differently when you're in different moods as you get older. You know, I mean, stuff that I listened to when I was a kid that I still listen to, I have a totally different uh, perspective about it. And that's the beauty. That's why I, I, I think, uh, probably like you guys, that music is my favorite art form. Not that I don't love all other kinds of art forms and people are coming up with new ways to express themselves. But that's what I love about music. It's, it's, it's very fluid. It doesn't care if the song is brand new or it's a million years old. It changes as you change. You know, I was thinking a good, first of all, you're right. And the yep. metaphor in that, one of my teachers recently was talking about how feelings and emotions don't live in a calendar. They just don't. And so we think that they're convenient and we can shut them on and off, but you can't. And music's like that. Yeah. It is not in a calendar. The, it's just there in our eternal album collection. There I said it, <laughs> albums. It's in our album collection. It's in our playlist. It's it's outside of time. It's outside of reality. It just is. And it slips under the door. Just, I've talked about this on other topics of art, but basically, you you got your door. Like you're not going to let anybody in, but music and art just slips through the door. It's like that's what bleeds out. You can't even control it. Yeah. Right. And and music is timeless, just like our feelings. We that, can't get away from it. That's that. I like the way you put that. You're right. Even if you you know you're like no, nobody's getting in, but y'all know it, it gets in. It's a joke because we always think, well, that's not convenient to have that breakdown. But <laughs> well, feelings and emotions really. Uh, yeah, yeah. You might as well go for it. You no, might as well. One of my teachers kind of, in a loving way, like hit me over the head with that with a brick, and I was like, you know, metaphorically, I was like, it is true. Like, yeah. you, the, and the music's like that. You you could be on your you just crappiest day, and you hear a song, and all of a sudden you're elevated. You there is something to that whole. We're getting our playlist going. That's right. I mean, yeah. Nowadays, athletes walk in with their headphones on to the big arena, but we all do that. That's we, right. We like, get our game on, right? We get our song on because you put that in your heart. It's like your little force field, really. It's Absolutely. Your shield. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I try to abstain from passing judgment on music I listen to, movies I see, until I let it either sink in or be in a different mood and try it again. I give it multiple tries. It is a mood ring, isn't Ex it? Yeah, you it's can't. It's a mood ring. You can't. You can't just react to stuff and say, "No, no that's no good." Or you know, you got to say, you know, you might not be in the right mood 
for a certain type or of thing. Or the imagery. That's another one. I do I do some work where we're I'm matching up music to uh, to visual, and it doesn't ever lie. You always know what's the right music fit for the right visual. Right. You just do. And somebody said, "Well, how is that?" I said, "It's it's. I could tell you it was beats per minute. I could tell you it was it was this. It's not." It's just a mood. Something feels right. And you right. know, truth has a ring to it. Music has a ring to it. And, you know, music is truth. And it, it's above all languages. It's under everything. It just surrounds us. I mean, yeah. that's why I guess we're having National Music Public, Public Radio Day. Day America <laughs> World. Mundo! Mundo, mundo. The third <laughs> annual Public Radio Music Day. When you connect the head and the heart. When you get them both together. Do. Yep. When you get it here. When you feel it. That's really when you're, sp- don't you when think you're like okay you talk about music and the heart here's the thing we spend our whole life like they 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 the the ones that come before us beat so much of your joy out of you to boot camp you to a level right. and then you got to throw all the boot camp out the world so you can just be in your heart that's right and that's the, that is one joy of, of coming around the corner and being past the age of oh I don't know thirty let's just, I'm, I went low um, <laughs> you throw the boot camp out get in the heart and music nothing does uh, that heart work like music that's just truth. Absolutely. Inda Eaton is with us here at uh, WLIWFM's Studio 51, and what a pleasure it is to have her perform and to catch up with her. You can go to IndaEaton.com. You can get access to her music. You can uh, find out where she'll be performing. She'll be at the Talk House on the 17th of December, and it is just so great to see you. And we're going to go out. You were kind enough to share with us. Now, you're very close. I'll probably get a lawsuit on this because they don't know that this is not, but that's okay. I thought it's raw, and I thought nothing like a public radio celebration uh, yes. to talk about the music of this. This is... Um, it's slip sliding. We all know that Paul Simon's take on it, right? Which is nice because he's a local guy. Well, no, he's and it's. I think if there's facts and opinions, facts. I think this is one of the finest songs ever written. It just is. If you go, to, if you really delve into what the song is saying, one of the finest songs ever written. Okay. And I heard Lee and Rose of Mama Lee uh, and Friends play this some years ago, and I sat there thinking, wow, they they have a relationship to this song that's just awesome i would love to do this with them Mm -hmm. so we did do this and it's a gem i mean you kind of hate to come to you know the radio and play somebody else's song but i just feel like they do such a beautiful job and i also think it speaks to the music community that we can work together at times and lift each other up and Mm. i did write rose after i called her i wouldn't write this i feel like in verse four, when she and Lee pick this up and Rose goes nuts in her little part, I think it's I think it's like the most emotional special moment of that entire show, and it was a great evening. So I I think slip sliding away. Well, Paul fun. Simon with the Rose Lawler, Karen, and uh, Lee Lawler, and and Eaton. Well, and, and well, I was there. Just <laughs> I was just I was just the chick singer with. I think I have a verse in it. Doesn't it, it was just that it was this magic moment, and at the last minute we decided to put the song in there. And I, I weep when I hear it. I just think they do a beautiful job. Beautiful. Well, it's so nice to see you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, sweet. And to eat. Come out to a show next time. I will. We got to get you back out. We're all That's coming right. out of our cave. That's right. That's right. right. Uh, into Eaton, uh, Mama Lee, Rose, recorded at the Stephen Talk House in Amagansett. Paul Simon's Slip si- Sliding Away on WLIW FM's Studio 51 on Public Radio Music Day. <laughs>